and welcome to that. I do it too often, I think. You said this before, you should do it more often. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Hello and welcome to episode 193 of Regular Features. I'm sat in a triangle with my two buds. <laughs> the man I'm looking at right now is Matt Lees. Hello. Buds buds of a feather. That doesn't really... Doesn't, Clump oh, together. Yeah. Clump <laughs> together in an oily, oily mess. Oh, and to my right is Mr. Stephen Hogarty. Hey, how's it all going, you guys? Do you want to clue people up into what kind of features you've got today? Me first. Me first. I want to talk about my feature first, because my feature is the best feature that is going to be in the episode of the podcast. Ball it's claims. about wild garlic and the ah. time. You ever, have you seen Deadwood? I have Wild seen Deadwood. Bill Hickok? Yeah. Well, imagine wild garlic. That's oh. all I'm saying. Well, That's if that doesn't fail to disappoint, <laughs> I'll be most unsurprised. Stay tuned. <laughs> what are you doing in your feature today? I'm going to be imagining a dog cafe. Ha 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 ha. Very Parisian. I didn't think up the idea. That was Cronenberg, but I did put it into reality. Fam. David Cronenberg. That's a joke yes. for a later <laughs> From time. From the 17th century, as a joke we'll go on to mis- make later. I understand that. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Pay attention to what you say. Look, Matt, what's what's your feature going to be? I'm going to be mixing up the world of yoga into some very spicy, possibly electric, new scenarios. Oh, no more details. I that sounds it. tantalisingly vague. Yeah. I feel like we're all Jon Snow when we talk like this. <laughs> Coming up on the show. Dun, 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 dun. Babies thrown into gorilla enclosure. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Who to shoot? Families, babies, or animals? Or yourself. All this and more on regular features. Let's do a podcast. <laughs> I want a feature now. I don't think I want one. one, 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 one. So, Log, what you got up your your podcast sleeve? I'm going to tell you with no without further ado. Some of you haven't. You've literally given no ados. Well, no further. I don't know how many pre ados there were. <laughs> in the- <laughs> I, sir, I'm no fuss, no stains. I work around the clock, and I'm not going to tolerate any more shenanigans. These are the ados <laughs> that I was alluding to, and you've made a liar of me, Steve. <laughs> without further ado. Previous ados notwithstanding, mm-hmm. I don't know if you know about PR stunts. Ooh. I know, I know about PR stunts because I used to work for a PR agency. There are only three of them. So um, what's the PR stunts? Yeah, you, you, name that, the three types of PR stunts. Loop de loop. You go. How free, about free petrol that causes tailbacks <laughs> on the NAM motorway? <laughs> that, that was a funny one. Um, I think that might have been the agency I worked for. Did that anyway? Um, you have. Let's make a really big version of something. Oh. And then let's make a really big version of something and float it down the Thames. And then there's let's project something on the side of a building. Also, for bonus then points... Then blow you have, the building up. You have, <laughs> you have, let's pretend that somebody's changed their name to the name of something because they love it. When actually, they probably might have done, but they're not really going to call themselves that. Oh, is that what happened when those that Raping weird the, right-wing the, couple named their baby Hitler? Probably. Was that you? No, that wasn't me. No. Trying to reinvigorate the Hitler brand. I just did it for fun. (laughs) Just used my old powers for for fun. (laughs) The the Hitler family going, guys, we need to get some more credibility to our family name. Could you force a baby to call itself Hitler? (laughs) Well, the other one is... Call itself... We just need a baby's first word to be Hitler. So (laughs) if you could just lock a baby in the room and just say Hitler to it over and over again, that'd be great. (laughs) Or like the baby who loved Hitler so much that he decided to uh, to get a tattoo of Hitler on his bum. Mm. It's not a real tattoo. It's not a real baby. It's all lies. Yeah. Everything you read is a lie. <laughs> Especially a disrespectful Hitler tattoo on a baby's bum. Babies shit out their bums without control. And that's not... I don't think that's what Hitler's going for. <laughs> no. God rest his soul. <laughs> I hope his soul's getting like poked just at the point where it's about to fall asleep. It's like really tired and it's just about to. Guys, uh, let's not speak ill of the dead though. No. (laughs) Rest, yeah. It's true. He's not here to defend himself. (laughs) Let's celebrate him instead. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Anyway, one of the classifications of PR stunt that you didn't mention in your list of three stunts is cafes. Staffed entirely by a dog. That's a new one. That's a pop-up one. I'm not in the pop-up game. I I left the PR game before pop-up became part of the vernacular. 
Well, that's what well, that's what Cronenberg did. I think they because their beards David from Cronenberg or something. <laughs> no, no, Cronenberg, sixteen sixty four. That's, what, and then the, that's the David like... Cronenberg who made films in the 17th century. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. <And> it's a... <laughs> the, the dog rips open and, like, beer spills out of it. And you lap it up off the floor. Yeah, yeah. you just suck it's it out of the tendrils. <laughs> it's tendrils going into everyone's mouths. Sh- Shoreditch is so edgy these days. Yeah. Asleep, I know for a fact that you were invited to this dog I cafe was. thing. Which is like, why didn't you go? I saw the emails four days late, long after the dogs had died. <laughs> please come to our, please come please come to our dog cafe before the dogs die from maltreatment. I got a follow up email saying they got into the beer and now they're dead. <laughs> And they locked the door. The first thing they did when they were given the keys to the cafe was lock the doors on the inside and drink themselves to death. Yeah. Oh, we locked them into a hot car full of beer. <laughs> they drank themselves to death just to stay cool. <laughs> it was horrible. It's the problem with it's the problem with pop up uh, shops. They're exempt from all laws, so yeah. you can literally just fill them with dogs, cars, whatever. And then if everybody dies, you just shrug and go, "Well, let's just do another pop up." The cars are moving. We've as learned. Well. We've learned our lessons. Can we just move on? Is that what they say? <laughs> yeah, guys, we, just, we still make beer. Let's focus on the matter at hand. Our tasty, tasty beer. And I, I think the fact that they make beer in the Alsace region and Alsacian, mm. I think that was, was that, the whole that was the basis thing. of the the joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do they have a dog on the logo? No, I'm thinking of. Um, You're thinking of brew dog. Bru- not brew dog. I'm thinking of. I'm the... thinking of two dogs alcoholic lemonade. I'm not thinking of two dogs. I'm thinking. Of... You're thinking of rude dog and the dweebs. Yes, rude dog and he was, the dweebs. He was more Rude-dog. mechanic than a beer drink, but, but mechanics drink beer. That's fine. Who makes the uh, the dandelion and bird dog? Fentiman's dog. Fentiman's dog. He's got a nice shaggy neck. That yeah. dog. Oh yeah, you'd love to wrap your hands around it. <laughs> no, <laughs> wrap just, your arms just, around. Just it. get a just get a just get a measure of where the hair turns to sort of neck skin, and then just grip it. Just keep going. Yeah. They like it because it's how their mums used to choke them. <laughs> and, then, and then just sort of get a bottle of Fentiman's with your arm around his neck, just make him drink it. Yeah. Well, it's a better way for a dog to go than in a hot car full of beer. Is it? This is all happening in a very hot transit van, Max. Oh. <laughs> That's where I strangle drink dogs. <laughs> well, I, for one, as I'm sure Steve has, wondered what a dog manned cafe would be like. Mm. And to that end, I wrote a script <laughs> that I would like you all to fire up in your respective devices bum, bum. and join me in a parallel universe. Remember when we had printers? We just print all this stuff out, and now we don't have printers. It was great printing stuff out. It felt yeah. very professional. Oh, so good. But also, we did all write our features in the last half an hour of what was supposed to be our jobs. Yeah, that was brilliant. <laughs> it was genuinely great. Oh, yeah. Life. It was. Nintendo magazine, my eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Oh, it says Gav Dog. Who's Gav? Well, I wrote it for four people because this is a podcast that's supposed to have four people in it. So yeah, podcast. Gav's been squatting onto a lot of... A lot of hot, things, hot dildos. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've been hearing. I've uh, been hearing he's talking about having a personal trainer, but I think we all know what that means. It means squatting onto a hot dildo. Hot red dildo, yes. Mm. Which is I've, not I've, in his contract. I mean, believe me, I've got a personal trainer, but it's a lot cheaper than Gav's, and um, the dildo's tiny and cold and chilled. Yeah, You've got a chilled uh, dildo. I see dildos. <laughs> I see dildos. Jill <laughs> <laughs> Dando's chill dildo. <laughs> well, join me, if you will, in the dog restaurant. Who will be Gav? I'll be Gav. Okay. Uh, what should I be? No, you. someone else be Gav, because I'll be the human customer. I'll be Gav. <clears throat> Hello there. I'm a dog. Will it be a table for two, or are you waiting for more friends? No, no, it's just me and my girlfriend, thanks. Very good. Just Sir and his... Girlfriend. Follow me, please. Would you like to ride on my back? I'm a dog. <laughs> Is it far? <laughs> Not at all, sir. In fact, by some contrivance of space and time, we're already there without even moving. Hello, sir. Uh, please take a seat. I'm also a dog. If you don't mind me saying so, sir, your nose appears to be bleeding. Is this a problem? My spittle is mildly antiseptic, if that's any help. No, no, no I'll, I'll be fine. Just, just a napkin for my nose and another for my girlfriend. Is madam suffering similarly? I dare say I have enough spittle for two if sir's concerned about my levels of production. 
I am, after all, a dog. No, it's fine. Just, just bring us the menus. Sir, this is our command. Two menus. One for sir, one for madam. Would sir like me to repeat that now that I don't have the menus in my mouth? No thanks, I got the gist. Is this menu in English? It is, I know the words. I just can't seem to focus on them. Oh, that's just your body acclimatizing, sir. Would you like to throw a ball? They're not really my thing, but knowing our lot, someone's bound to chase after it. Thank you. He throws a ball across the restaurant. I'm not really feeling that, to be honest. I've been fooled too many times by too many people only pretending to throw the ball. I swore to myself, never again. Speaking as a human, sir, do you ever feel like there's an itch that you're not equipped to scratch? (laughs) What, like on the back of your neck? Without wanting to put words in his mouth, sir, I suspect he's talking figuratively about an itch deep in the soul. Thank you, Stephen. You see, I can quite adequately scratch the area behind my neck by twisting my head around, so... (laughs) This is adorable. I I love dogs. Thank you. We are dogs. And then, simply by paddling my rear leg around, you can see how easy it is to scratch my... Oh my god, that is so good, I am never going to stop doing it. Oh, Oh, this is so good. Oh no, he's scratching that bit that makes his back leg go around. With his back leg! This will create an infinite canine feedback loop that could wipe out an entire block. (laughs) I'd love to help, but I'm chewing out my own anus right now. Ironically enough, at this point in the narrative, my bloated anal glands are itching in a way that I can't actually scratch. Or bite. God, I want to bite my own anus all the way out right now. Well, well to, <laughs> Jesus. There aren't enough people for this script. So many characters, we are just swapping characters. <laughs> Carry on, you be me, Steve. Well, to be honest, I'm not sure what to make of this dog restaurant. What do you mean, sir? I, mean, I mean, <laughs> should probably I should probably be the human customer. Go on, you, be, you stay being the human. I mean, it started off otherworldly, with unexplained movement and nosebleeds. Yes, sir, and at that point I think the plan was to make this a cafe for dogs, where you were being prepared in unusual ways to be eaten by us, the dogs. Yes, I thought that was where this was going, too, but maybe you were men in dog suits. But in the last minute, it's changed into a sketch about the fragility of civilization and how for all our airs and graces, we're all just animals with uncontrollable instincts. It pains me to say it, sir, but I worried about that myself. But then I thought, well, no, that's surely the most obvious route for a script that starts with posh-talking dogs. Of course they're going to end up chewing their own arseholes out. Well, excuse me for having a genuine and extremely common glandular condition for dogs. I'm sorry if that doesn't fit with your postmodern comedy stylings. I love that you added four dogs because there are so many voices. <laughs> Nobody knows who the dogs are. No one knows. <laughs> That's right. If you're going to say the human, can you can you add speaking as a human at the beginning of your next sentence, please? Speaking as a human, and without wanting to, co- <laughs> without wanting to copy the comedy stylings of a comedy troupe fresh out of fucking Cambridge, which is exactly what I'm consciously doing. I just don't see a way out at this point. Ahem. <laughs> what the hell was that? It's me, your girlfriend. And I think that actually, this sketch is about the silencing and poor service given to women in popular culture. Oh, that's good. I didn't see that coming. What an excellent script. It really did have it all. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was like a roller coaster of, of, of plot lines, uh, none it? of which were resolved. <laughs> All of which were resolved. No, because yeah. in real life, it's not plots, is it? It's just meaningless events queued up one after the moments other. Moments and moments piled upon moments. The dog cafe uh, was purported to be the world's first cafe run entirely by dogs. And I read about it, and I watched the YouTube video that they sent me. With a dog hierarchy? It turns out... So with the supervisor dogs? Who do you think's really in charge? A man. There are... There is a uh, it, was either, there. it was either a man or cats. <laughs> <laughs> they... Because they have little barrels around their neck, and they bring a beer to your table when you wave your hand in the air. That's cool. That's a good idea. But there's a person there who refills their little their barrel with another beer, so they can go out and do it again. That's not entirely run by dogs. No. 
Oh, God. And don't try and tell me that the people are working for the dogs. And I read... <laughs> I read the other day that they, um, that they uh, that a small child managed to climb over the back of the bar to where the dogs get their barrels refilled, mm. and they panicked and they shot all the dogs. <laughs> and the reference to the gorilla thing. <laughs> I've only seen references to that on Twitter. Yeah. I don't know actually what the gorilla thing is. I started watching a video about the gorilla. If people don't know about it, but didn't the baby fall in the gorilla? Well, basically, a child managed to really cleverly like weasel its way into a gorilla enclosure. What, weasel like, by dressing up as like a, a mechanic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weasel was like hitman. He dressed up as a mechanic to get into like the storage area, and then knocked well, out a zookeeper. <laughs> I saw him sliding down a hill like a fucking idiot towards a gorilla. Well, basically, yeah, it was something like that. It was this thing of being like a combination of a kid being quite persistent in trying to get in somewhere he wasn't supposed to be in whilst parents weren't really looking and then suddenly people went oh my god there's a kid in with the gorillas and they thought well we better just shoot the gorilla because yeah. otherwise it's going to probably kill that kid dead yeah no they killed it which is why there's outrage because like, people should like, they have killed the gorilla they should have shot the what's parents what's going on they well, should have the shot I- the baby it's the ideal opportunity to find out if gorillas are really tender with human babies <laughs> well, <that's laughs> the thing I started watching this the video never to be right. no, scientists no, around the world are furious this is the new this is what the this is the tack that the tabloids are taking now is this video shows the gorilla protecting the baby and, really? and being nice to it <laughs> fucking, he goes like he puts them in a corner. Does the gorilla like, go? No, <laughs> and leap sideways in front of the baby. The bullet. He stands in front, <laughs> of, in front of, the... of loads of adult humans trying to shoot a baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? This zoo. This is my chance to shoot a baby and pretend I was aiming for a gorilla. <laughs> I think it was the Express that had a headline, which was like moments before the gorilla was shot. Here he is protecting this young boy, and like. The, he has the boy in the corner of his enclosure and he's standing in front of it in a very defensive pose and you go, okay, yeah, this gorilla really does look like he loves and cares for this boy. And he grabs it with a leg and just fucks it through a river. <laughs> what? Drags him really violently around you go, oh shit. With the baby? Yeah. <laughs> oh God, is that why they shot it then? It wasn't just... I'm, I'm completely ignorant of this. Did the, did the gorilla grab the baby by the leg and fuck it about a bit? He dragged him in a way that I wouldn't drag a baby around through, <laughs> through three inches of water. Gorillas aren't too hot on human etiquette. It wasn't they? very gentle with it. But I mean, the thing is as well, it's just like they say, oh, he's protective of it. But like maybe he's protective of it in the same way you're protective of your buffet plate that you've left on a table. And then you just go away to get curious. some more sausages and then you see someone's hovering near it. And you come back as if to go, whoa, not done with yeah. that whole point like, I'm sorry because okay. everyone else in the world probably knows about this. But is the baby dead? Baby's fine. Oh. They the is dead. But the then people are angry about use, that. They yeah. couldn't use tranquilizer darts because that takes a while. So, yeah. And then if the if the gorilla figured out that he was being tranquilized, he would go. He'd go right. Well, how about this? I'm gonna bite this baby's head off. <laughs> <laughs> I win. Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd have beat me, <laughs> a gorilla. How <laughs> tranquil is this? <laughs> anyway, it's weird. No one knows whether you're supposed to feel sad about it or I don't. He doesn't. If whatever. I think. I Everyone probably hates the parents, don't they? That's probably the way Basically, the internet yeah. goes. Yeah. Yeah. Look, she put out a Facebook She put message. out? Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's the wrong move straight up. <laughs> she had a Facebook message which was like, please leave me alone. Stop vilifying me because I lost sight of my child for five seconds. If you ever had a child, you would know that... They're always climbing into gorilla enclosures. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the one time <laughs> it's caught on camera, a gorilla gets shot to death. <laughs> Typical. And now it's time for Steve's regular feature. Steve's wild garlic foraging time. Oh, right. I'm going to come out full on now as being a Waitrose twat, but wild garlic is really fucking something. Mate, you buying your wild garlic, mate? No. Forage it, dude. It's everywhere, man. Customers Customers in our pub bought in loads of wild garlic. The pub fucking stank of the stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's a stinky herb. You make make (laughs) pesto out of that shit, it'll blow your face off. Yeah. I've got some pesto. 
Yeah. I've got... What the You've hell? all got wild garlic Inde- pesto. Independent wild garlic pesto you stories. Joking? Union. <laughs> I think I think this is possibly a result of SEO, of when you go like, wild garlic recipe, from the first hits that sounds enticing, is just, yeah, pesto, I'll do that, yeah. yeah. Did we all do it because we saw a targeted Facebook ad for wild garlic? <laughs> I just get sent shit in a box. Where do you forage this stuff, then? Is there some under my bed, or... Come on, tell me these. Oh, man. I'm psyched. North London. I'm just going to unzip. Fucking... Put your hand in there. I guarantee you'll pull out a clover or a bulb. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll stink. <laughs> <laughs> Lock both ends off and then crush it. Oh, we're and talking about the language. skin comes straight off without oh. any problem. Log, you do put the pest in pesto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what if I was a wild garlic fairy? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish you were. <laughs> and I had wild garlic questions for you. <gasps> Call me wild, wild, uh, wild Gaelic. Gaelic. That's I don't know. Wild Graham. Wild. Oh shit, let me think. Wild, wild Graham is a great name. Wild Graham. We're gonna do it then. Wild Graham. Yeah. Hey, I'm Wild Graham. Hello. Welcome to my field. You want to forage some garlic? Yeah. You gotta get with my friends. <laughs> Sorry, Spice Girls attitude to foraging garlic. Yeah, he was my first friend. Wild. Oh my god. G- <laughs> Gavin. Oh. Yeah, that'll do. Wild Gavin. He's got a question for you. Hi, I'm Wild Gavin. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go to the field. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the tutorial for a video game. <laughs> Welcome to the field. So I guess you want to be the best wild uh, garlic about, huh? I heard you want to find some wild garlic. If you want to get under that low fence, press C. Now, <laughs> press this button, throw a garlic grenade. <laughs> Which one of these garlics is a made-up name for a wild garlic? <clears throat> wild garlic has many names. Did you know mm. that? <sighs> Many names. So it's wild. It's, it's, it does what it wants, I suppose. Is it A. Bear's garlic. <laughs> B. Devil's garlic. <gasps> no, that's got to be real. C. The president of America's garlic. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it C? No, I'm going for bear's garlic because you looked at me when you said it and it's like. Bears, bears, <laughs> garlic. Come on. At least one of you is correct, and that means I am defeated. Wild garlic Gavin is dead. We- oh. Weak piece of I didn't, shit. I didn't, <laughs> shit. I didn't, I didn't, oh, I didn't shit. want... Those are unexpected oh, consequences. You fucking killed... You killed... This is me, Wild Garlic Graham, and you killed Wild Garlic Gavin. Oh, sorry, can we revive friend. him with another question? Yes, you can. Oh my god, for that! I've got a revival question. <laughs> for circumstances just like this. <laughs> Amidst all of the kerfuffle, you may take two steps closer to the wild garlic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this question is similar to the one Gavin asked you before he died. Which one of these is a name for the real garlic? Which one of these is a real name for the garlic? Is what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> this is imperceptibly. <laughs> this, this field of pixies and golems and trolls is just entirely preoccupied with the real name of garlic. I think it's something they all knew. Yeah. Well, well is it something that you know? Okay. A. Which one of these is real? A. Bear Leek. B. Bear Stearns. C. J.P. Morgan Chase. <laughs> okay, this one is real. Well, I'm going to go with J.P. Morgan Chase because fuck Wild Gavin, he deserves to stay dead. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with that as well. Let's, let's leave that, that oh. fucker dead. You have murdered, double murdered, you double down on the murder of the Wild Garlic Gavin with your incorrect comfoolery. The correct answer was Berleek. Sometimes it's called Berleek. That's no as in, as in like bear leaks, bruv. Or is it like... Yeah, but it's like, it's not even a one leak. So it can't be bear leaks. Bear means lots. It does. Bear leak. I mean, leaks are onions. Bear leaks. Are oh, garlic onions as well? Is it the... Is that is my it like an onion? Sort of. It's one of the same... Uh, 
Yeah, thanks. From yeah, because onion- it's like spring onions, like a little wow. leek, isn't it? I love listening to people talk on the very, very edge of their knowledge. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, am I right? Well, That's I just a- know that you can use leeks instead of onions in lots of things, so they're they're basically the same in my books. Fuck them. Oh no, who's coming out? You take two steps closer to the wild garlic oh, that you wish to forage. Wait, yeah, wait. you're almost there. <sighs> wild garlic Glenda is here. I was going to say Gwenda. Ah, fucking close. Yeah. And she has a garlic based question for you. I'm going to kill her. Hi, I'm <laughs> killer. I like this kind of setting for a quiz in which in which the consequences <laughs> on on you. Yeah, it means like it's not just a case of try and get the right thing. It's like if you get it wrong though, somebody will die, and maybe that's what you want. <laughs> Only Gavin's questions kill him though. Glenda's questions. Oh, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Fuck. I've got two more names of garlic to quiz you with. Which of these is the correct one? <laughs> is it has, has Glenda been on the Wikipedia page for garlic <laughs> these are all real names apart from the ones that have just said aren't for wild garlic <laughs> is it broad leaved garlic or is it extremely narrow leaved garlic <laughs> you have ten seconds oh, I think it's broad leaved I'm, broad leaved I, I don't think getting it wrong will hurt her like you yeah, said. Yeah, there's no point, is there? So, I'm going to, yeah, let's get let's this one right. Let's try and get it right, and then maybe she'll die. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, um, <laughs> you fired a gun into the air. <laughs> because you won. <laughs> you, got it, you got it so correct. Yeah. I'm so glad I bought my laser gun <laughs> wild foraging for garlic today. Hey, if we've got a gun, why are we trying to kill these fuckers with questions? <laughs> yeah, why are we Stop even... Stop trying to kill the garlic you, fairies. Why you gave us a gun. Yeah. <laughs> Well, why are you even entertaining this fucking weird conceit? <laughs> I just want some garlic. Right, you're now amidst the garlic. You're like, you're fucking right in there. Oh, how, how deep in my... With reference points of my body am I in garlic? Are you on your knees? I'm on my knees. There... I'm stood up. How far? I'm stood up. Oh, stood up. They're, up. They're brushing your knees. So I'm kneeling down. Tickling, now then, nuts deep. Tickle in the gooch. That's how deep I want to be in garlic. <laughs> I was willing to put myself in any position to be nut deep in garlic. <laughs> okay. Here comes the king of wild garlic. Wild garlic. Oh, um, I don't want to fucking negotiate. That is shit. Uh, I shoot him with my gun. I shoot him with my gun. Bang. Calvin? Yeah, Calvin. I like that one. Yeah. Calvin. He's the king of wild garlic. He knows what's up. He knows all the remaining names. Every so, I'm gonna lead. I'm gonna read out a list of names of garlic. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> is that where this is going? <laughs> um, <laughs> you have to tell me. A twist. <laughs> true or false? For everyone you get correct, you get to forage garlic. <laughs> <laughs> you had better have fucking bought some garlic with you. Because <laughs> get... I want a physical reward for this. <laughs> you get one minute in oh, the we'd garlic. I'd smell it if it was here. <laughs> this is bullshit. Yeah. This is like the crystal maze. <laughs> no, you've got to go on an adventuring holiday. Well, adventuring afternoon. Yeah, that's true. But imagine Going if the crystal maze, you had to like do something and it's like you got an amount of. God, yeah. Guys, Shh. let's do this. Yeah, fair. yeah. Buck Rams. True. It is true. You forage a garlic. Nice, nice. Ram sons. False. Wrong. Oh. You put the garlic back in the ground. Oh. That's a, what? <laughs> That's oh, a yeah, didn't know, didn't know about that, did you? <laughs> but the garlic that I previously won? Yeah. That's terrible. It doesn't even fit back in the ground. It's going to die. <laughs> Thumb it back into the soil. Starbucks. False. False, you're correct. You pick up the garlic again. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> but, I, but I pick up a fake garlic. A fake Starbucks garlic I've got in my hand now. It's got your name written on it, the Sharpie. <laughs> Wood garlic. I'm not getting involved with this. Like, I've already put your Do it. garlic back in there. Lose my garlic again and I will I, fucking end you. I think it's real. Wood garlic is real. Yes! You now have two garlics. You've got to understand that Steve doesn't think of... 
non-whimsical. I know. Yeah, that's what I went for. I was like, it's too boring. <laughs> yeah. It would be like arsewind garlic. Or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably wood garlic. <laughs> <laughs> False! <laughs> you collect more garlic. Three! With two garlic? Three garlics up on the Three. deal. I reckon we've got enough for pesto now. Okay, how about this one? Gypsy onions. Oh, Shit! I... Mm. That let's sounds have, real. Let's have a whisper. It, yeah. oh, it sounds real, but it's also got that lovely racist element to it. Yeah, which uh, might make it real. And might... I think that I think it makes it real because people were naming garlic before. Like, oh, this it was like not crazy. cool to be racist. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe mm, Steve wouldn't. If Steve invented it, that's kind of implicitly him being a bit racist, really. Yeah. Wild garlic, Calvin demands an answer. We think it's true. It's true, Jim. Yes. Four garlics, four garlics, four <laughs> garlics. God, people back in the day were bad, weren't they? I've got enough garlics to sling over my shoulder <laughs> and not look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about these ones? Little Sprouty. False. False, you are correct. Oh, yeah, more garlic for you. Big Sprouty. Shit. False? False. You guys really want the garlic, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Because you're hoovering this shit. Six. Out. I'm holding them like a bouquet. Actually, <laughs> so you snatched them off my back to do so, but I don't mind. They're our garlics. <laughs> Stinking Jenny. False. True. Oh, good. Stinking <laughs> Jenny is a real name oh, for long. wild garlic, Put and them. it inspired the entire feature because I wanted to <laughs> trick you. <laughs> Log, put them back over your back again. Ugh. And finally... Pesky stankers. <laughs> <laughs> that has got cramble mess written all over it. That correct. Is... That is the cramble weed that grows all about the cramble bush. <laughs> you don't throw it away it's in false, time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Back to Ooh. a bouquet of wild garlic. Yeah. And now now... you've got enough garlic for a pesto. Oh, more than enough pesto. Huh? I can put some pesto in little uh, Tupperware dishes, and you can all take them home with you. Yeah. But we don't actually have any, do we, Steve? Um, I can get you some. I'd love that. It grows all around my house. Does it actually? Really? Yeah. 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 Next time we podcast at your house, I'm just gonna like tear your garden apart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're a poor house guest but you get the garlic <laughs> get the garlic done we went Maverick. foraging we went foraging for it not very fucking far we went foraging in our garden <laughs> wait what are you I foraging fell, well, you I, only have to go I came, home, I came home drunk fell asleep in my front garden when I woke up there was garlic in my hands it's like uh, grills <laughs> Does, I'm you living off the as, land. You only have to go as far as the garlic is. No, no, I'm yeah, it. just, I'm just, just japes. Yeah, I'm still proud of you. It's just japes. <laughs> You're a good forager, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> features. The regular features. These are the episodes of the Regular Features Podcast. Their continuing mission to find a feature worth repeating. To seek out new features and regular features. To boldly feature where no feature had featured before. Regular featured before. Regular features! Regular features! Regular features, regular features, regular features, just regular regular features, 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 regular features, regular features, regular features, regular features. Hello there, it's time for me to do a feature. Um, I was thinking about yoga recently, and I thought it was a bit weird, the fact that you've got hot yoga, right? Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's like you've got... Bikram. Bikram, yeah, it's another name for it. But I like the fact that it's like you've got yoga, and you've got hot yoga, where you go to a different type of gym, where it's like everything's really hot. Mm. And, and like, it melts your sinews, so you can just easily flip your legs anywhere. But I thought it was a shame there aren't more types of like uh, extremities going on, and I realised also the fact that you've got like the the, the hot hot yoga gym is a bit like in Pokemon where you go to the fire gym. <gasps> yeah, and so I sort of try to imagine in my head what it might be like to enter the world of Yogamon. Yogamon. What if I don't want to imagine that? 
Do I? Am I now forced to imagine it? Yeah, via the medium of a script, you're going to imagine it with me. Oh, now I thought we were just all going to meditate. And think. No, that would be really on point though for the topic. But yeah, no, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna read a stupid script log. I'm on board with that. I, I sounded like I wasn't there a second ago. <laughs> but I'm actually 100 percent ready for this. I'm going to be the narrator. What do you guys want to be? You're I'm going to be a boy. Oh boy. no, I'll be the old man. Fuck it, I'll play to type. You don't have to. You I'm going you're... to play to just type. Because you're the oldest man doesn't mean you have to be the old man. Wow, wise words <laughs> from a boy. <laughs> That's... <gasps> that... <laughs> I don't know how to pass that. <laughs> Yoga man, gotta stretch it all out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stretch in yeah, your yeah. limbs and shit. You I'm stretch a... me and I stretch you. Yoga man. We Yoga are the man. misfits. It's <laughs> a different cartoon. No. It's a different mm. cartoon. But I do like cartoons where the good guys and the bad guys sing. Yeah. And the theme tune. Team Rocket yeah. should get a verse in yeah. the Pokemon theme. Which is like, fuck Pokemon. We are Team Rocket. Assholes. We're going to get that Pikachu. We killed him. We got a cat. <laughs> we threw a coin at his head really hard. We now have a blimp like in the shape of him. Yeah. No one ever talks about that. The Meowth <laughs> balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Whose balloon is that? Yeah. And how did it get in the shape of Meowth? And who why, commissioned what, that? What are their reasons for wanting such an easily catchable Pokemon? Oh, so something serious. special. Giovanni wants it. Well, oh, Meowth okay. must have been the one to commission it. Maybe they must have like tricked him. He's like kind of like uh, slightly kind of like He's clearly some sort like of a low boyfriend. level employee of the Team Rock and organization. Who's got shitloads of money. It's like if City AM had a hot air balloon with my face on it. Oh, I wish <laughs> they did. Imagine that. Just I'd just be like walking through <laughs> Soho and I'd be like, oh, you see that balloon? That's my mate. <laughs> wow. His face looks really wide in that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that okay. doesn't make sense. Is, you're right, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, let's begin. Roaring off the back of his steaming success against Damp Slick, leader of the hot yoga gym, our adventurer stretches towards destiny along the road to actually its organic Viridian City. Oh boy, what an adventure! That gym leader Damp Slick sure put up one slippery hustle! Ho, 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 why, yes, he sure does. Most boys your age find the fumes of his steam rooms too intoxicating, losing control of their supple little bods while Slick skips around and controls the situation. Well, I sure showed him. The power of hot men and hot, hot steam aren't enough to overcome the power of heart. <laughs> and I've got to be the very best, you see? Like someone already presumably is? But then they won't be the very best because I'll be the very best. <laughs> That's how rankings work, my boy. And what mighty looking legs you have. One day you might well be the world's best yoga. -er. I am the best, Grandpa. <laughs> Not with those puny glutes. I bet you couldn't even manage a reverse Bundy mallet. Oh, yeah? Watch this! With a twist. Downward facing. On the rocks. Oh my. Quiet the spirit. Well then, perhaps you're ready to face me. Fuck Wiz! It's Lightning Lotus, the long lost leader of the Thunder Yoga Gym. It fucking isn't all. Scratch him out, kiddles. The skies turn black as lashes of lightning crash down upon our brave adventurer. Uh, <laughs> arching his back as the blades of electricity slip from the sky, the young boy dodged bolt after bolt. <laughs> While I've got you in a compromised position, how about this? <laughs> oh, jeepers! That one almost frazzled my glue! <laughs> I guess I should have known better, old man. Huh? I spent weeks preparing for this moment, maintaining the pristine pachinko pose while I've been rubbing ultra matcha lattes into my thighs. But, but that means... That's right. I've electromagnetically... Magnetically... I've... Uh, oh, that's right. <laughs> I've electromagnetically charged up my gooch. Releasing the blast of carefully accumulated bomb to balls electric energy, our adventurer defeated Lightning Lotus. 
I guess I had the balls and you blew the job! Fuck! Fuck everything! I'm going to live in a mountain or something! Fuck! Fuck you! Fuck everything, honestly! Just fuck it! <laughs> Will our young adventurer defeat Frosty Nips, the master of the Ice Yoga Temple? And what about the master of the Ghost Yoga Gym? How will he contend with such a slippery spooky? Find out in next week's episode of Yoga Man! Yoga Man! <laughs> 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 We've got a, um, a bunch of stuff going on this summer, haven't we? We've got our 200th episode uh, party live show at first, Logs Pub in Nottingham. And it's not just one night. It's the first Saturday, the second and third, I believe, isn't it? Or the first and second. Yeah. This yep. is going to be a big... This is this is the biggest regular features party that we've ever done. We're having a party one night where you all come and just meld with us. I mean, by meld... It's going to be like a flesh thing. I mean, you all clamour around us. Have you seen John Carpenter's To a point a where thing? no one can see where our hands are. Yeah. <laughs> this is on July the 2nd as the podcast recording. The 200th episode of Regular Features is going to be recording at Logs Pub in Nottingham, the King Billy. If you can make it, the night before we're going to be having a Regular Features Readers Party at Logs Pub. The Logs yep. Pub thing will probably be ticketed. Um, but we'll work that out soon, but yeah. We'll have all the details. We'll have all the details very soon. But if you're near Nottingham and you can never make it down to one of the regular shows that we do in London, then just put your hands in the air and go hooray and come along to that and have a lovely time. Mm. Sweet. It's gonna be it's gonna be a big one. I can't wait. And also, it's going to be so far in advance of it going out on the podcast stream, on the downloads. Quite possibly, yeah. So you, uh, it's going to be hyper-exclusive for like four <laughs> weeks. <laughs> yeah, because like that's just we couldn't work it out to make it work in the time that made sense. I think it's cool. I think it's like, do the 200th episode before we do the like, next one. Yeah. And it's like, it's going to be a cool secret thing for the people who managed to come along. Yeah. I think it should, we should just re- release oh. it as an MP3 that MP3 that people email amongst each other. I think if, not you, if, speech, if you, you are have a, to email it. If you are a patron, not only will we give you the link to get the tickets first, but you will also get access to episode 200 long before the that idiots seems, have That seems it. entirely fair. Yeah. Um, and Logs Pub ones are always a, always a bit more raucous, a bit more fun. I think it's cool. I think but, it's a cool idea. But so also excited. we've got a live show going on uh, all the time in the Canal Cafe Theatre and they're brilliant. I think we're actually getting all right at them now. So yeah. come along. June 6th is the next uh, live in, podcast there. Even the ones we think have failed really badly, people seem to enjoy. Yeah. Mm. So I honestly think we're actually <laughs> impervious to failure now. Yeah, I'm going to just walk out on the stage completely naked and start uh, singing psalms from the Bible. Yeah. We're doing the next one, yeah, June 6th. I will lie, de- lie backwards between the legs and bat your balls forward to the ping pong bat. Oh, thanks. You're really nice. kind. It's so sweet. So, yeah, if you're listening to this now and it's like this week, the week it came out, then yeah, Monday, come and see us at the Canal Cafe Theatre. Canalcafetheatre.com is where you can get tickets for that one. But or, hey. Or just click on the buy tickets link on the regular features website. Oh, yeah, which been is regular features. Updating the website with some nice things. Well, I, I've just made it a little bit more time insensitive. With a view to the fact that we never update it. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's very good of you to do that. But you can also go to patreon.com forward slash regular features to become a patron of the Regular Features podcast, the highest tier, most beloved of our readers. It's like being a patron of the arts, but more important. Patron of the farts. <laughs> ah, ho, ha. Yeah. And you can donate as much or as little as you like per episode. Whatever you can give, it helps and it's nice. Uh, I think that's all the things that we've got. Yeah, we'll Can you aspire to do anything more than something that helps and is nice? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'll mention this because not everyone else forgets. But if you're coming to the live show next week on Monday and you'd like a T-shirt, then send 10 quid on PayPal to regularfeaturespodcast at gmail.com and tell us what size you want and I will hand bring it to the show for you so you can have a nice T-shirt. I will... St- Stuff that T-shirt up my T-shirt and you can pull it out of that T-shirt. Uh, to whichever end you want. Any of the four holes. 
They're, oh um, yeah, honestly, four. Yeah, they're all four. Yeah, he, he. Is it is it rare for a man to just know off the top of his head how many holes there are in a t-shirt? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I had to think about it because I thought the front and back were separate holes for a second. And I was like, you know, I was like, oh, seventeen <laughs> holes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. How, how many holes are there in this sentence? So yeah, is that it? We're done. We're done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dragon Features Podcast. We love fun. you. Yeah. I've had fun. I hope they've had fun. Yeah. Bye. See you in 194. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. Bye.